Hey people, it's Natalie Lee here, hopping on to give you guys the top five design trends you will see in design and construction this coming year. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and watch till the end of the video, because at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you one big thing I really think you need to avoid, and it's gonna make some people upset, but I just need to go ahead and say it. And as you're watching, remember, design is regional. So I am here in Metro Atlanta, the Southeast of the USA. So if you are seeing this elsewhere and what you see going on in the design world differs from what we have going on here, that's totally normal. But this is what we are seeing, what we are gonna be doing, and what I think you guys are gonna wanna keep up with. First up, let's talk tile. So number one is tile. In kitchens and bathrooms, this is such a great time in design because you can do whatever you want. We've gone through seasons where everything was a simple white, uh, you know, subway tile, very plain, minimalist, sort of the, the, the farmhouse vibe. Those days are gone. I'm actually really glad to see them go. It's time to have some fun with your backsplash and your bathroom tile. Right now we're seeing a lot of jewel tones. Here's a little clip here of the reel that we did with a lot of the emerald greens are in. You're still gonna see a lot of geometric shapes this year, glass tiles, mirror tiles. We're doing all the things with all the different types of tiles this year. And it's really great because we can fit the tile to the client, their personality, and their space instead of trying to fit into this box that everybody's trying to get in with you know, a simple white tile. And if you're going to stay with a simple white subway tile or any rectangular shaped tile, you will notice that instead of laying it uh, horizontally, everybody's flipping it vertically. So here's a little picture here of what I mean. And we love it. We're actually doing it in a couple spaces as well. It helps add some height to the space as well as makes it a little more interesting and just leans a little more modern. And again, just a fresh spin on what we've already done before, but giving it a new twist. And for tile, here is a few of our favorites. We've got some geometric ones. Classic black and white tile is always gonna be around, but I'm really enjoying it this year and encouraging several clients to lean this way and do that. If you're doing a bathroom, you can go all the way a super nice white bright marble like pictured here, or you can even do a super dark handsome slate material as we're doing in another job that you will see soon pictured similar to this so again this is a great time for tile have fun with it choose what you like pick something that reflects your personality gives the space a little bit of depth and texture uh, and always make sure ask your designer what their favorites are what they're seeing what they think would work best for you number two for the trends for 2024 is natural organic looking elements you will see this in decor and as well as the construction, the building renovation side of it as well. And what I mean by that is you will have super modern sleek lines, which we have leaned more. Again, we went through sort of the farmhouse era, then we leaned a little more modern uh, in 2023. This year feels a little more transitional is I guess the word I would use for it. But you'll see some really nice sleek modern designs, but there will be elements in there that soften it and give it sort of a natural organic vibe. And what I mean by that is you can add wood beams. Here's another one. But again, in a sleek, modern setting, not in the distressed farmhouse way that we have seen before. You have handmade tiles. Again, here's another image. It just adds a little bit of a texture, a little bit, I don't wanna say distressed, but you can tell there's a care and a, a handmade uh, you know, element to it. Same thing with furniture. When you're doing decor, you could have some really sleek, modern furniture, but then have a really cool, uh, natural, organic centerpiece of a, uh, you know, a coffee table or some antique furniture mixed in with the modern stuff. I think that's what's going to give the designs this year some really great personality. And again, you can tailor it. You don't have to feel like you have to buy everything new or everything old and distress it. You can go all in the middle and then mix the two, which is something I've always really enjoyed doing, but it's really great to see it out in the marketplace. One thing I will caution you against, though, is I see some of this um, granny chic stuff online where it seems that people have jumped on the train of adding these older natural organic elements or some heirloom pieces or antiques, and then they go overboard and they switch everything to antiques and then they got plates on the wall and they've got the, you know, the older style lamp and then the old table. But what you've done is you've just taken your clean, new, fresh, modern design that was supposed to be a nice blend and you've taken it all back to, you know, the 60s. <laughs> and it, it, it's like I said, I call it grainy chic because it just goes a little too far and it's not really where you want to land. So make sure when you're designing, you know, especially, you know, kitchens, bathrooms, living rooms, especially when it's, there's a decor element, 
make sure there's some new stuff, but also some things that look a little weathered, not distressed, but handmade, a natural element, bring in some wood tones, uh, you know, even some, some concrete elements are nice too, to give it a natural vibe. Number three is paint. Paint, we are Sherwin-Williams people here. We mainly use their colors because we love them and there's always something that suits our needs. Uh, but right now, everybody wants to know, okay, what color should I paint my house if I'm renovating or what are we doing? What's the hot trend? And again, it's a year of so many things go and it's really great because you can really express yourself in a way that you find unique to yourself. But the trend that you will see sort of on a bigger scale is we're still going to see a lot of the white walls. Uh, one of my favorites, and I'll go ahead and share, is the color Greek Villa. So here's a little sample of that. We use that a lot. It's a great white that blends well with grays and with browns, and it's just a classic. So we use that a lot in our designs. You'll still see that a lot for your wall colors. And instead of seeing painted accent walls, that's still somewhat a thing. You'll see uh, you know, a lot of times a black or a gray or dark gray accent wall is something that's very popular. But what I really like is you will see accent rooms. So there'll be a room with a, a darker, bold color or a vibrant, um, you know, jewel tone color. So here's an office that we actually just finished and check it out. It is so awesome. This is an amazing color. Uh, it's actually Sherwin Williams Urbane Bronze. We did the whole office. I mean, from ceiling down to the baseboards, it's all done in this color. But as you see, it adds such a richness and such a great depth and handsomeness to the space. It's really a cozy space, uh, but doesn't actually shrink it. That's what's funny is people think it's going to shrink a room. But sometimes it can actually make it feel bigger to do it all in one color. Um, so again, you wouldn't necessarily do your whole house like that, but it's great to have the accent room and the rest of the house can still have lighter walls. Same thing for bedrooms. Bedrooms are another room that you can have some fun in and dining rooms and bathrooms. I've always said it. And if you've worked with us before, you know, I love a great bold uh, color in a dining room or in a bathroom. So the main thing you will see is the white walls, but again, have some fun. Do a room totally different than everything else. Have some elements that tie together. That's why you can have a designer to tell you how to make it all make sense so it doesn't look totally out of place in your, in your space. But have fun. Choose a cool color. Go for it. So number four is wood tone colors. Everybody always wants to know, okay, I'm about to redo my hardwood floors. What color am I supposed to do? Or are we doing grays? Are we doing bleached white? Are we going dark wood? Are we doing light wood? What are we doing? <laughs> and again, what's great this year, so many things go, but I am really telling people stay middle of the road. And what's great is when you're doing so many different things with your wall and your tiles, keep your floors pretty neutral and pretty medium that's the best way to describe it you don't necessarily want to go too light or you don't want to go too dark if you're just trying to stay middle of the road on that so um again we use minwax stains a lot or the the color tones for that there's uh, one called coffee one called provincial those are a couple of our favorites early american is another one you can blend those three together in different uh, capacities and see what works best for your space but we just say stay middle of the road have fun with it you can, though, if you are doing a super custom space that you plan on staying in and you just want to do you, a nice, really dark hardwood will also work. And especially we're doing a client right now that has uh, cherry floors, so Brazilian cherry floors. So they're actually quite red to begin with. So when you sand them down, it's really hard to get them um, a perfect medium tone. So because of the nature of the material that we're working with, we are going to go a little bit darker, but it's really going to tie in well with the design. So you got to work with what you have, make the best of it, do what you like. But if you're trying to see, you know, what the majority of people are doing, I would say medium brown. And tip number five, design trend number five that you are going to see a lot of in 2024 is something I've talked about for the last two or three years and it's not going away is wallpaper or wall covering if you want to be fancy. Uh, it's something that we have been doing for years and we are not going to stop. It's amazing. It's a great way to add personality and texture and color and warmth to a space. Uh, it's not super cheap to install. People will realize, okay, there's a little more to the wallpaper. You can try it and do it yourself if you want to uh, save some money, but you might end up, you know, 
really hating the result or hating your life momentarily, uh, but it's something that we really suggest and uh, love for our clients. You don't have to do the whole room. I think some people, when they think of wallpaper, they get nervous and think of sort of this image right here. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm being surrounded by this wallpaper. You don't have to do the whole room or the whole house. Again, it's just like the accent paint for a room, you can do the same thing for wallpaper. I love it in laundry rooms, uh, bathrooms are great. Uh, ceilings, certain ceiling spaces are wonderful for wallpaper. We're actually doing one right now in just a little foyer space that's gonna have a great color story to sort of tie in the rest of the design. So it doesn't have to be a ton of wallpaper. Uh, and there's different kinds of wallpaper. You might just have an aversion to something super bold or super plain, but we go all across the board with it. We have one right now uh, a laundry room. Here's a snippet of the wallpaper that we're using for that. It's just a nice, almost fabric looking texture. But then we're also doing a bathroom in an, this wallpaper right here, which is totally the other end of the spectrum, which is super graphic and colorful and, and bright and bold. So you can do whatever you want. Wallpaper is a lot easier to remove these days than it used to be. So don't be quite as fearful, you know, of those horror stories that you've heard in the past. Um, but always make sure if you're going to do it yourself, just know it's going to be quite the task. And if you're going to hire somebody, make sure that they come well referred. The people that we use are amazing, top notch, the best in Metro Atlanta. So we can definitely take care of that for you. But wallpaper, it's not going anywhere, not with our company anyway. So have some fun with it. So that was the top five design trends I think you're going to see in 2024. But now I'm going to tell you something that I really hope you avoid. And again, I know this is going to be controversial for some people, but I really, really encourage you guys not, do not take your design cues from influencers. You know, influencers, they're online selling you their perfume, their shirt, their, you know, mixing spoon for the kitchen. And then they're all of a sudden trying to tell you which couch to buy and which rug to buy. I really don't suggest falling into that trap, guys, because as you will notice as you're scrolling along, so many of these influencers end up selling the same stuff and their designs start looking all the same, especially over the span of a couple of years, what did they all do? They all did the distressed farmhouse and now they're all shifting a little more, you know, transitional and some of that granny chic stuff that I was talking about. So please don't fall into that trap because you're just gonna end up being a carbon copy of something else. And I mean, we see this phenomenon happen. Think of the Stanley cups, think of the different shirts that sell out, you know, the pair of shoes that you can't get because an influencer posted them and then you see them everywhere. You don't wanna have that same outcome with your home. It should be a space that is tailored for you, that speaks to your family, not someone online that has been bought and paid for by a company to sell you their product. And here's a little tip, guys. A lot of times influencers will only post what they can link. So that means, even though they may genuinely like a product, they're not necessarily choosing the best product even for themselves because there's plenty of items that are, you know, say antique or from a smaller, uh, company that cannot be linked or commissionable. So you're getting mass produced stuff where someone can make money off of it. Uh, so what I would say instead is go ahead and follow designers like myself online. Find other designers in your area or even across the country to follow and get tips from because they're actually working out in the marketplace and are looking at every resource for their clients, not just somebody that can give them money. Another resource I love is Architectural Digest. They have great videos on YouTube of celebrity homes. Now, I don't particularly care what a celebrity is doing in their home, but what I love about it is these people that they interview and take tours of their homes live all over the country, all over the world. So you see different design elements um, from all over the world, which I think is really great. And you can always learn and see, oh my gosh, I don't see that in my area, but I really love it. So you can start curating your own design style uh, and find what you like there. So a little controversial, but I say avoid influencers. I think in many ways we should avoid them. <laughs> then, uh, you know, not, not get into that. It's a billion dollar industry, guys. So we've just got to be careful what we're being sold. And let's just be authentic to ourselves in our designs for our homes. So it is best for our family, for ourselves, for our peace of mind, so we can really enjoy them. So hopefully you found this helpful. We will come back in 2024 and do this, but please stay tuned for other videos this year. Follow along, share our page uh, with a friend. We love to have you here and we really appreciate you. See you later.